This episode is brought to you by Sattva. Visit sattva.com slash YMH and get $100 off any order of $500 or more. Sattva is the online luxury mattress company that provides you with amazing customer service, incredible product. Uh, we have Sattva Loom and Leaf and Luxury Firm models in our house. It's an incredible product, super environmentally friendly, incredibly high quality, and again, award-winning customer support. These guys are the best. It is totally worth spending uh, money to sleep on a high-quality mattress and not breaking the bank. There's no overhead, there's no store, there's no commissions they pay. They pass those savings on to you. I could not recommend a mattress more. You guys already know that. Uh, I love my Sattva. I highly recommend you getting one. Go to Sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash Y-M-H and get $100 off any purchase of $500 or more. Thank you, Sattva. Start the show. One K. Speaking of hot and looking good, looking good. He's Bert Kreischer. I'm Tom Segura. But let's just put the pedal to the metal and go. go, go, go. This is a perfect way to start off this show. Twelve years in the making. This is gonna be a fucking shit show. But everyone's gonna, it's gonna, gonna make that hate us. hundred percent. It's not an Asian cough. It's coronavirus. You can't just <laughs> blame it on them. That is what you say. You said no. it's their fault with the eyes. <sighs> Welcome to another episode of Two Bears, One Cave. <laughs> He's Bert. <laughs> I'm Tom. Uh, this was recorded a few days before you're seeing it, so we don't know if some of your loved ones aren't here anymore. Oh, Jesus um, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> This is this is we should we should de- timestamp this so that the jokes we make you realize we didn't know. <laughs> it's like it's like I did that. First off, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank My you. bestie Tom Segura has a special that is streaming pretty much right now. Yeah, most likely you're seeing it tomorrow if you're watching this when this comes out. It's called yeah. Ball Hog. Yes, it is phenomenal thank you buddy and i cannot wait i'm like i said to my dad my dad called today and obviously it's not out yet i haven't seen yeah. it uh my dad called today and he goes um there's a lot of my friends are watching your special a lot of, and i guess i don't have anything to do and i was like oh thanks dad thanks, man. take that as a compliment yeah and, and i said yeah you know i think it's kind of crazy like i go i'm really i'm really excited to watch tom's special because you get to a point in the end of the night where you're like great i've watched all the pirates of the caribbean yeah the girls are in bed now it's me time and you fuck to go on that main page and see you or delia delia's coming out april 8 15th yep pete davidson's got one my special hey big boy is streaming right now i'm sure it'll say if you like tom's you'll also like these three shirtless fat guys (laughs) you have three on the platform, all shirtless, all shirtless, and, and like I look, I look like I'm wearing the exact same costume. And I have, I've thought about this a few times. There, there is not a feasible way that you can go back to shirts now, ever, yeah. ever. What I'm hoping is that we do this lockdown for for coronavirus, and I get fucking ripped. Yeah, it's most likely that that'll happen. <laughs> I've never had eight weeks sober. Well, you told me, you're like, I haven't drank since Sunday. 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 We're, we're, uh, it's Wednesday today? It's Wednesday. Yeah. But I, no, but I didn't drink Sunday. Normally Whoa. I drink Sunday. Right, right. And I didn't. What'd you do? Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's no way I'm not white knuckling this. No, I know. My OCD's been off the fucking charts. I've been eating edibles every night. For real? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to lean into some edibles to find some. What are relaxing edibles? Indicas. If you eat an indica, it doesn't make your body tingle and your tongue not feel it anymore. I mean, it depends on the <laughs> dosage, but you know, I like it. Like, if you get a good indica, it should make you. Have you talked about wet. what happened with you and Joey? I have a whole bit on stage that I open with now. Are you serious? Yeah. Um, oh. I might have to talk about something else soon, but <laughs> 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 yeah. You know what's so so bizarre? I mean, I know no one wants to like. Hear us talk about talk shop forever, but 
think about this because I know this is affecting everybody's life differently, but putting aside, you know, the seriousness, think about the fact that as comedians, all we know is to get on stage and, you know, either, you're either doing sets in the town, the city you live in, yeah. or you're doing longer shows on the road, et cetera, et cetera. All of us, you know, we need an audience to do it. It's re plausible that we will not perform stand up for two months, maybe three or four months. And none of us, none of us have ever done that. Not, not, but here's the thing. None of us, like not one of us, like, so all of a sudden, and when you when you're rusty, you're fucking rusty. Oh, it's weird. It's and weird. so you're gonna take all the comics and put them back at the exact same level. Yeah, it's almost like a reset button. Because what happens is when you're doing it, you know, you go through periods of of performing all the time and many days in a row, and you get into a rhythm and you get into a zone. Yeah, you can tell like when you know, like when you come back to the store and like someone's been on the road just show 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 and they do their set you're like that dude's sharp right yeah now. he's dialed in he's, is he yeah. about to shoot a special and you're like oh yeah 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 because that's just like it's just everything's just clicking and then you can tell when someone's like oh i went on vacation i just got back i worked for travel channel <laughs> and you get well you just go like you can just i mean actually most of the time audiences don't even really audiences because, can't tell but we can tell we can tell and even we sometimes struggle to tell some of the difference from person to like, you'll be like, that was good. And they're like, nah, like I fucked this and this and that, this yeah. up. And you don't even really realize it. But you, as the person performing, know, you know, when you're like, my shit was fucking off tonight, you know? Yeah. Like I missed a, I missed stuff because I haven't done that joke in a minute. And when you say in a minute, you mean like four days or something. Now, you know, let's say it's like June and we are performing again. I mean, we're all going to be like, uh so Bro, i have two kids i thankfully recorded my last sets in the beacon yeah and then uh and at uh the constitution all i recorded them you can listen so I, to them. I can listen to them at least and catch up but here's the other thing is that like there's gonna be a lot of shit if you're a comic you better have a notebook on hand because there's gonna be a lot of shit that flies out your head and the other part is there's no so my wife's a fucking nazi uh, that'll be clipped out that my wife is a Nazi about this social distancing. Yeah. So we're not hanging out with anybody. Yeah. So there's no like, you go to a, a, a house party and you're hanging out with some people and you drop a joke and you're like, that could work. And yeah. then slide it in. It's just you with your kids trying to, and I'm like so hungry. I just started getting into puns, which is fucking exhausting. Yeah. And so all day, all night last night, she kept trying to make puns about quarantined. And I was like, we're not fucking quarantined, Isla. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, man. That for all this, I, I have a bunch of theories. I have a bunch of theories that number one, I think that comics should pair up and go out on tour together and with a lower ticket price, so people's dollars stretches further. I think I honestly think it's a, there's a social responsibility for comics to make a run of clubs and boost the economy in those clubs. Those gotta clubs go, you got to go to the clubs. You got to do it. We you got to do a run in clubs. Like hit those funny bones in Virginia Beach, Richmond, all those ones that supported us for all those years. Go in, low ticket price, sell it out, move merch, m get everyone tipped out nice. I yep. mean, you got to there's a it's going to be fucking really interesting and it's going to weed out the people that don't give a fuck. Yeah. Those Hollywood types and, that, and there's not many of us in the business. But there are the ones that are like, no, my ticket price is 55. They can suck my dick. You're going to be like, ooh. It's stupid. You're stupid and you're short-sighted and you're also just greedy and dumb. Yeah. Um, uh, I will say this too because there's, you know, I know everything's changing and affecting people differently day to day. One of the things I've been trying to do, and I think that like people in, no, no, they can, <laughs> they, I'm serious. I have a list of things of things I think you've been trying to do. Really? Add carbs into my diet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been really trying. <laughs> plan plan how this plan how this this the massive genocide Dude. can benefit you? No, I fucking by the way, I can have um I don't know, two bites of rice and I think I put on 10 pounds. My body like as soon as carbs are introduced to my system, it's like, you want to get fat again? Like, like, and I mean like really fat. <laughs> like I, I, I cannot, I have to restrict it 
completely or I just put on fucking 50 pounds. I didn't eat any carbs yesterday at all. I love how all your, all your like <laughs> discipline things are always like 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, guess what I did? <laughs> the night before? I ran. When? Yesterday. <laughs> the, <laughs> night, time. the night before I woke up in the middle of the night. with. Have you ever woken up with a sugar tongue where you're just like, oh, like it must be what like those congressmen that are gay that have been holding it in their entire lives. Oh, and then they end up in a hotel room snorting meth and just fucking nine dudes. And it's got to be the best orgasm of their life. Oh. Imagine how how hard you come when you're like repressing you're repressing those gay feelings and then you go, you know what? I'm not just going to let them out. I'm going to let them out of a cannon with meth fucking and hook male hookers and just it's gotta slamming, be the best. doing everything. Like, like it's almost like, remember when you were a kid and you were I like, would fund that if you're interested in, in, in partaking in something like that and you'll let us videotape, I'll, I'll pay for it. I would like, I would love a congressman to come out and go, Hey guys, I'm going to live two different lives, okay? Just giving you know. I got a wife and kids. I'm very happily married. Every now and then, I'm going to fuck a massage therapist in a hotel room in Jacksonville with lots of meth. That's a weekend. That's my weekend. Give me my weekend. I'm back on. I'll be like, I got, you got my vote. Dude, that that was uh, Andrew Gillum, right? Yeah. That guy, he, had like a, he almost like almost became the governor of Florida. Like he... You he know, was close. You know, Budichetch is like, we're not all like that. Of course. <laughs> that's why. That's why you cu you vote for a guy who's out of the closet. Yeah. Because the guy out of the closet's like, I just love dudes. Okay. Yeah. Like I don't love fucking hardcore poppers in a bathtub. And that fucking it's in the toilet, motherfucker. That dude was like, uh, Gillum. Is that his name? How you say his name? Gillum. Um. He, he said that, uh. That he was just, he was like, I actually just had too much to drink. And I was like, that's no, not what happened. Hey, guess what? I drink a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I've never once been like, man, either I got to get to bed or I'm sucking cock in a hotel room snorting meth. I had too much to and he, drink. And also, you you can tell when someone's lying up like that for a number of reasons. But one of them was he was like, uh, I'm going away now. And uh, I just need to reassess things. <laughs> what a like, great time to go to rehab. Oh, yeah. During the coronavirus. This is when people forget these stories. Like, oh. bad news is this is the best time to have personal bad news. I bet Ari loves this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he just went, he just unlocked his uh, his Twitter account. Are he's you like, serious? He's like, oh, I think that <laughs> he's, he's like, off. <laughs> I, I texted Donnell last night because yeah. Donnell makes fun of the way Ari said, Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Or you know, Ari just got the news. He's like, coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Uh, thank God I didn't shoot that special. What, did, what was Donnell's take on that? On what? On Ari with Kobe? Yeah. Is uh, that white people smirk, black people don't smirk. If you smirk you're, and you're black, you're gay. <laughs> Donnell's got some really enlightened views on, on, uh, on homosexuality. <laughs> Donnell's, he goes... I, he goes, why can't you just be an old school homophobe? And I was like, because eh, Don Donnell is, I'm not speaking for Donnell. He never said that. I'm just saying. <laughs> Go to his Twitter. Go to his Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Iris. Yeah. So he thinks that Ari's gay? No, no, no. He just thinks, I, I think, I don't know. He just, I think he was, I think, I think he didn't give a, I don't know. I, I think he wasn't allowed to say, I don't really care because you get fucking, you can't do that on black Twitter. Dude, yeah. I got in a fight with Black Twitter when I was younger. About what? It was Valentine's Day. And, and uh, I... You're like, Valentine's Day is not for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Can't we have one fucking day? God damn it. You got the whole fucking month of February. Can't we get the 14th? <laughs> <laughs> That's getting clipped. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cough. <coughs> typo. I'm cool. You're typo. You're yeah. cool. So um, so no. Uh, I was, I was on this right when Twitter started being big, and uh, I got into it with Jesus and Miro on uh on Black Twitter one time. You got into it with them? I thought you got your buddies with them. This is before I met them. I had to tell them I got into them. I got into it with them. I can't remember. Can you see? Um, will you type in uh, my at Bert mentions and then 
uh, either uh, Kid Kid Miro or Jesus Nice, and see. I, I you can read that. You can read us getting into it. I don't think they remember it, so I hope not to bring it up to them. But they was uh, no. Okay, no, 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 no. Just get away from that. I don't even care. Stop, stop, stop. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Scroll. Scroll, Jesus fucking Christ. And never mind. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So just take it down. Just take it down. Today, take it down. Take it down. Take it down. No one needs to see any of this. So. Shut up. Yeah. Were you like. Guys, pull up your fucking pants and turn your music down. Was that it? No. I the first one started with on Valentine's Day and I and I wrote um oh, God. I wrote They were it was trending. <laughs> that was so bad. The day I learned. So Let's just change something. <laughs> what did you say to them? I, I I don't know what that one was. That was another one I guess I got into with them. I don't remember that one, but even reading it, I was like, motherfucker. I said I was, it was it was trending and it was V Day Gifts in the Hood, right? That was the hashtag that was trending. Okay. So I read it and as I read it, it was all very like Can you search that? V Day Gifts. Yeah, V Day Gifts in the Hood. Hashtag. Hashtag V Day Gifts in the Hood. V Day. I think that was it. Wasn't V Day in the hood? V D in the hood? No, V Day gifts in the hood. Yeah, V Day gifts in the hood. Might be in the hood. No, V Day. It was V Day gifts in the hood. It, that was the high hashtag. All right. Well, anyway, so right. I wrote back. That uh, was like all stuff like, uh, uh, get get her a Glock. You know she needs a click clack. Uh, get her a mattress. Who remembers jumping on a mattress when they were kids? Like it was weird. I didn't get any of the ones that they were doing, and then some of them were like, uh, "Get her a paternity test." You know, she doesn't know who her daddy is or her baby daddy is. When some of them were like racist, I didn't know they were coming from all black people, right? Oh, uh, okay. So I, I didn't understand what black Twitter was, so I just wrote in, "How about a classy pen?" And I didn't realize it was all black people and black people lit me up and they're like yo this isn't for you son like get out of here mm -hmm. and then i realized it was all black people and then i went oh, okay i wrote again v-day gift in the hood anything dungeons and dragons son <laughs> and they got fucking irate i read it was like the same 15 people just coming at me and then i i wrote give me one more try guys and i wrote how about a bottle of champagne but spray it all over that hoe. And they were like, that's more like it. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first one. Jesus and Miro, it was about safety pins. Do you remember a social, it was about safe, type in uh, Bert Kreischer uh, safety pins Twitter. And I, I said clearly, Jesus. Oh, there we go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So Jesus and Miro. So safety pins are great for holding things together, like the illusion you're doing something. It was Jesus and Miro, and this is before I knew them, and their whole point was like, yeah, you know white people going into Pottery Barn grabbing their safety pins? And I was like, they don't sell safety pins at Pottery Barn. And I was like, oh, that's such a hilarious broad stroke of white people, of uh, not knowing white people going, right. they go to Pottery Barns to buy their safety pins. And so I wrote a message from a man who's clearly never been to Pottery Barn. And bro, I got fucking torn to pieces. I was like, never mind, tap out, tap out, off internet for a while. Did they message you? I think, scroll down, I think, I think Jesus did. He might have deleted it. Chris Stefano did? That's interesting. Oh, that's not me. Um, but yeah, I think, I forget who messaged me, but I think Jesus did, because I brought it up to them when I did their show for the first time. And? And they were like, yeah, I don't remember that. And I was like, oh yeah. Hmm. But yeah, the, uh, I just did their show. Are you doing their show at all? Or no, um, you're not going to New York. I'm not going to New York anymore. It's kind of crazy, man. I'll tell I was going to go do all this fucking, some of it was pretty cool press. Tell us who you were going to do. And, no. I'll do. and I'll do the interview for you. Oh, okay. Tell me. 
Um, I was gonna do Colbert. Okay, all right, here we which go. I like here Colbert. Go. Here we go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> Catholic. Uh, very excited to announce my uh, next guest. You can see him on Netflix. He's got a new comedy special called Ball Hog. You know how he's gonna say it because he's not gonna go ball hog like a girl wants nuts in her mouth. Mm -hmm. Ball hog. Uh, put your hands together for Tom Segura. So, Tom, uh, how good, you doing, man? It's good to be back. Oh, oh, you've done this before? I have, yeah. Oh, oh it's so funny. You white guys just all blend into the <laughs> same. So, um, Tom, tell me, uh, what's Ball Hog about? Is it, is it new material? It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they tend to ask you to, to do new ones. Oh, okay, okay. And so these are all jokes you've done before. Uh, yeah, I did it on tour, and then I did it at a show. Yep. So, uh, so here's my question, Tom. Uh, you you, you talk about your family in this. I do a little bit. And yeah. how do they feel about it? <laughs> That's funny that you ask. Uh, they're not into it. Really? No. And no. you have uh, you have one wife. I have one current wife. Um, and a ch two child. Two childs that are both. Good. Boys. Oh, Christian. Christian. Christian boys. Okay. Yes. Oh, Christian. Okay, great. Yes. Now, in the special, you talk about murdering dogs. Now, hold on one second, because you've gotten in, <laughs> you've gotten in some heat before, and are you ready for the fire that's coming your way? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It tends to boost sales all around, so... Every every special, I try to upset a group of people. Fantastic, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Sounds great. I think I'm going to love it. Um, Tom, yeah. last question. We yeah. do a game here on Colbert. Yes. Where I say a word, you say the first word that comes to your mind, okay? okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. Tom Segura, mm -hmm. we're going to play a match pass. Okay. Where I say the word, he says first word that comes to his mind. I then say the next word that comes to my mind, and we go back and forth until someone says a racial slur. Here we go. All right. Igloo. Ice. Catch up. Redskins. And he won. Okay. He won. That was amazing, Tom. Well, thanks for having you back. We'll see you again in two years, and I won't remember you again. All right. What else were you going to do? Please say you're going to do. Uh, <laughs> what else are you going to do? I was going to do um, Full Size Run. What's that? The Complex Sneaker Show. Um, all right. What other shows are you going to do? This is fun. This is a great way to do this. We'll get all your press uh, in right now. Uh, it was a bunch. If you can clip these out and go, uh, what we should do. Okay. What, other, what was the big one you were going to do? Okay. Like, Let me look it up. And then, and then what I want you to do is I want you to pull up an interview online and, and get what questions he asked uh, John Mulaney. And then me and Tom will take turns answering those questions as if we were in John Mulaney's shoes. Does that make sense? Mm hmm You gonna do Ellen? I don't know. I was submitted for it, but um, this kind of to do Ellen. I know that'd be fun. Hey, by the way, Ellen, we'll have you on our show. Yeah, this will we'll be the only guest we'll ever have. We, I loved that in the Stanley Cup guy. I would love to have Ellen on our show. We're gonna do Fallon. No, I was yeah. going to do Conan when I came back. I had a back. dream about Jimmy Fallon last night. Yeah? Yeah, I had a dream that Jimmy Fallon, that Leanne and I were going to a special, uh, oh my God. Was Jimmy Fallon really excited about it? Because he always gets really excited about everything. He oh. just, you're just realizing what, that what your dream meant or something? Because you seem no. like you're blown away by it. I had a dream. Yeah? I had a dream that... Uh, that just our people roamed the land? No. So we were, going to, we were going to do something with Conan, and it was like a very special thing. And it was like something Leanne wanted to do with Dwight Yoakam. And we got there, and the guy we were supposed to call... Um, wasn't answering his phone. So we called Conan's phone. And on Conan's line, he was doing a game show. And it was like questions about music. And I go, well, Leanne, let's just answer the questions about music and then we'll get up. And then we don't have to worry about calling him. We'll just be the winner of this contest. And so she was like, okay. And I go, I kept going, come here. And she's like, don't touch me. I, I, I'm, don't touch me. And I was like, why, why can't I touch you? She's like, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. <laughs> so, so, 
Jimmy Fallon's house was right around the was like right down the hill. So he saw us doing this and he goes, what are you guys doing? When I said, we're answering questions about music. He goes, I know everything about music. And I was like, oh, cool. Come on up. So he comes up and we're, and him and Leanne are working. And I go, I'm going to go back down to your house and you guys work on this and this game show. So I go down and Jimmy Fallon's girlfriend had invited two Irish girls to come party with them. And they were fucking gorgeous. They were so gorgeous, right? Beautiful. Jimmy and, Jimmy and, uh, and Leanne come down. And they go, we, we won the thing. We're ready to go up. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. And I grabbed her and I go, don't, she goes, don't touch my stomach. And I go, why? And she goes, I've been saving it as a, as a surprise, but I want to show you this. And I go, what? She lifted her stomach and she had a tattoo that said, get the fuck shit out on her stomach. And all these Irish girls looked at her and they're like, and I was like, that's my wife. And I was like, you got a tattoo of that? She's like, yeah, get the fuck shit out. Right? Like get the fuck shit out. And I was like. And then I woke up and I was like, ugh, why do I have to be married to her? Yeah. That was my dream. That and was I, your dream? Yeah, that was a weird dream. Anyway, put what what you were going to do, Conan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, can we just do Fallon real quick? Let's do Fallon. We're never going to get to do Fallon. Okay. Let's do Fallon real quick. All right. So you, pull up. Are Jim, you going to be Jimmy? No, no, no. We're going to have Jimmy Fallon. Oh, uh, I got Ask you. the question and then we're both going to answer it. Oh, okay, okay. And, uh, and we're going to do two answers. We're going to do the answers that would make our fans leave us and then the answers that would make our fans love us. Okay. This is a new segment on Two Bears Come All Cave called Love Us or Leave Us. We can't play footage from Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, I, yeah. Or you could listen to it and ask us the question. There you go. Here's what you do. As we continue talking, just pull it up on a separate device or something, watch it in there, see what he asks, and then get on mic. How, how scary right. has this coronavirus been for Josh Potter? Not being able to see who he's talking to. <laughs> you think he'll live? He's got, I mean, like his his immune system's like really strong. It looks like his hair makes it look like he's the guy that goes. He's like the old saloon uh, hanger he, hanger on her. He seems like the kind of guy that could like eat out of the gutter and then just like fart and. <laughs> that would pass a disease through him and he'd be fine. You know? I got these orange sauces in San Jose and I've been putting them on everything. And our friends reached out and they're like, hey, how long are these orange sauce sauces last? And I go, oh, they're still good. And they're like, it says a month. And I go, yeah, yeah. And they're like, you gave us to this in January. And I was like, I'm still using it. And they're like, well, we tried it and we had horrible diarrhea. And I was like, yeah, that's what you get when you have hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. I've just been putting poison on my food, and then just shitting it out. I mean, how often do you get diarrhea? Every day. Every day. I don't ever shit solid. I've never had like a dog shit where it like forms at the end, like there's closure. Yeah. Like do you have like, you ever see like nice clean logs? In never. There? I've never had a, I haven't, I haven't had a clean log in a very long time. Mostly a mess. Mostly it is, it is fucking, it's almost like someone grabbed a handful of clay and just threw it at the back of the toilet. Yeah. And then, and then, and then in the middle of the afternoon, it will be like leafy diarrhea. Yeah. Like just like, like a woman pissing. Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot. I, have I did a, Whitney's podcast. I feel when it's just I did stopped. Whitney's podcast and she peed in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. She got up and peed in the bathroom. It's like. Turn you on? No. Oh, well, no. Oh. But no. But I, it's the, it's the first time in my life where you, where I t averted my eyes. But in my head, I was like, I was like, but just real quick, just real quick. She's beautiful, man. Whitney really is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She really is. And she's a great basketball player. Great basketball player. Yeah. What are you getting a phone call? Are you getting a uh, phone call from my business manager too? <laughs> no. Because that's who's calling me. And I'm a right. little freaked out. Oh, yeah. Where he's like, look, man, you're in trouble. <laughs> he's like, you got two months. Things that goes for eight weeks. We're dead. We're dead in the water. The, um, no, it was a fun podcast. I did Whitney's podcast. I had a fucking blast. Have you done Whitney's podcast? Are you? I have never done her podcast. Oh, you are should you, do Whitney's podcast. Are you into pee? No, I don't really care. Did you ever do like a no experiment? Mm -mm. Like a pee in here is kind of no, thing. no, no. I no. would never let that. I don't care about that. Anyone ever ask you to pee on them? No, I peed on chicks, but not they didn't ask. <laughs> what happened in the shower? Just oh yeah, piss yeah, on yeah. them and go. Water getting warm. <laughs> Are you pissing on me? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that sometimes now, and I it's like, ugh, it smells like coffee. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> it smells like coffee. Yeah. I, mm, 
bit my tongue good on that one. You did? One time. I'll tell the story. I don't care. Yeah. One time. Uh, I Liam, peed on a chick one time. All right, go ahead. No, you start. No, no, no. You start. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> you start. Nah. Uh, uh, one time I shit in the tub with Leanne. We were in the tub and I just shit in the tub. What? Never mind. It's a long story. Uh, shit in a tub? No. Ugh. <laughs> it's a fucking squirt. Anyway, what were you your story? <laughs> Uh, no, now that I think about it, <laughs> it's not a cool story. Have you ever just jerked off solo in front of push? No, no, I have just like, Hey, watch this. Yeah. I mean, I've done it for like a joke. Oh no. But you're, you're like having a serious, like, I'm going to look. No, we had, this. no, we had, a, we were in the shower one time and we were, and she was, she was kind of like, I was kind of like joking around and going, if you want, you can just stand over there and I can, she was like, and she was like, okay. And I was like, wait, what? She's like, I'm, I don't have a problem with it. She's like, it's less work for me. And I was like, really? I was like, come closer. Why don't you kiss me? And she was like, okay. And I was like, huh? By the way, we could do this every single fucking morning. And? And uh, we did it once. It was one time. Never, And I never had the balls to pull the trigger again. Really? Yeah, Why? I've been a little, I don't know. I have a weird thing with, Lee, I did it last night. We had sex last night. And I said to Leanne, I nice said, job. I said, thank you. I banged it out. You did. Oh, oh. You really got in there. I put it down. Yeah. She can get it and she got it. Nice. Now, uh, she, she, <laughs> she, Gosh. I have a podcast, by the way, that we yeah. recorded on the bus that I have to edit out so badly. Because of all your. Because of my bus driver, Ron. Mm -hmm. I, Leanne goes, is, did he say, uh. That was from Fallon? Yeah. But wait, what did what what did he say? Uh <laughs> It was just it was it's aggressive. And I might leave it in cuz I don't feel like I feel like cancel culture is kind of not right not there right now. Yeah. I feel like everyone's like, you know what? Let's just get through the next eight weeks. Yeah. And then we'll start canceling people again. Yeah. And so I might just leave it in and Ron doesn't care. He's like, put it in. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Was he talking about like holding chicks heads underwater and stuff? No, he's just, he's, <laughs> he's been pitching. He's been hardcore pitching me. I don't know if I told you this. He's been pitching very aggressively that for a promo video for the fall tour, we shoot a porn where he fucks Christy Mack. And so he's like, you hire her as a performer to come on the bus. Fuck me. You guys watch. I'll fuck her. And then you got, at the end, you go, yo, Birdie Boy World Tour. I'm like. It's a great promo. I go, <laughs> I go it sounds like a win-win for you, Ron. And it sounds like a lot of money out of pocket for me when I could just go, hey, Birdie Boy World Tour. And he was like, yeah, but, yeah, but I get to fuck Christy Mack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, it sounds great, Ron. It sounds great. Not that. I mean, if you want to do like a part two of that, I'll work with her too yeah I, I, I wonder if is that cheating uh no it's work yeah right yeah i just hey works light these next 10 weeks babe i gotta fuck christy mac i gotta fuck <laughs> all not just christy mac i want you to take a look at this list and tell yeah. me who you don't approve of yeah <laughs> would, uh so would you get down with christy mac oh if i was not married to leanne in a fucking heartbeat. no even married like as a working performer no. oh as, as I, if i was performer and i yeah, had like perform, on camera and that's how we made money yeah uh she might be my number one yeah yeah she's gorgeous man yeah. her body does not make sense it really doesn't make sense yeah she she has a perfect butt like a perfect butt and then the skinniest fucking waist and then skinny legs and then big tits perfect face I think you like her. I like them all, man. Yeah, yeah. We Ron had, uh, said Ron's. I told you this, Ron. Never mind. I did you, you watch this. the the link we sent you? Did you see the? I haven't link? seen it. I haven't oh. seen it. Okay. This episode of Two Bears One Cave is brought to you by Capterra. You find you need to find software, but you don't want to spend all day looking. Use Capterra to simplify your search. Quickly fil filter options to find the features and pricing you need. You compare side by side choices um, and save your favorites. And with an in depth software guides free in-depth software guides and tools, plus over 1 million reviews from people like you. Capterra gives you access to everything you need to know before you buy. Like we're actually looking to analyze some of our own um, business data here, merchandise, what's working, what's not. We did a search, we pull up a tool that gives us things that are in that software space and find the best one that works for us. Find the right software for you at capterra.com bears captera is your business ally it's this free online resource 
to help you find the best software solution for your unique needs. No matter what kind of software your business needs, Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution. Visit captera.com slash bears for free today to find the right software choice for your business. captera.com slash bears, captera, that's C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A.com slash bears, captera, software selection simplified. This podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Here's a question. Which of my online searches does the government have the right to know about? Is it A, quicksand porn? Is it B, Asian stop motion porn? Or is it C, hey Siri, which animals can I get pregnant? None of the above if you have ExpressVPN. Without ExpressVPN's protection, though, hackers, governments, ad companies, and ISPs all have full access to your data. I Don't want them using my web history or video searches against me. That's why I use ExpressVPN every time I go online. ExpressVPN encrypts and reroutes your web traffic to any number of countries, keeping you safer and secure. Simply download the ExpressVPN app, click connect, and boom, you are protected. With ExpressVPN, you can also make it seem like you're browsing from a different country, so you can watch any Netflix library in the world you want. How cool is that? ExpressVPN is the fastest VPN I've tried, and it costs less than $7 per month and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. It is time to stop governments and internet companies from keeping tabs on your data. Take back your online privacy like I did with ExpressVPN. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months for free at expressvpn.com slash cave. That's one year package express vpn e-x-p-r-e-s-s-v-p-n dot com slash cave for three months free with a one year package visit expressvpn.com slash cave to learn more are right, you ready to do our your jimmy fallon interview yeah yeah, yeah let's okay do it. all right are you jimmy or yeah. are we just gonna read it together uh how about we do okay you read it to me, and then I'll I'll be I'm gonna be legit Bert doing Jimmy Fallon. Okay. 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 And- Bert Kreiser. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this guy's so funny. I love. You're so funny. I love you're hilarious. You're so I love you, you're man. You're so funny, I dude. Saw- I saw you at the New York Comedy Club years ago. You were. Oh my god, you were I, there. I was there, dude. Oh, I'm so excited. I love your hair. Keep going. What was good? Okay. Hey, big boy. It's so funny. It's just. Oh, he's got all these other ones where he takes his shirt. Oh, it's crazy. Okay, so. All right, we're going to play this game. Uh, Hey, Bert. So, okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, which... I don't know these questions are coming. No, no. (laughs) Which of the seven dwarves do you most identify with? Okay, okay, I've been waiting for this. Okay, Brad Williams, (laughs) Wee Man, um, (laughs) Tattoo from Fantasy Island. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Um, And I think those are are my three that I really... (laughs) Oh, my God, he didn't name any of them. (laughs) All right. Tom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this. This is a good one. This is a good one. Tom. Yeah. Yes. Okay. He's got a special called Ball Hog. You're, I didn't even know you play basketball. You don't look like a basketball. Yeah. Anyway. No, no. I, just, yeah. I do love basketball. All right. He's got a special called Ball Hog, and he's coming right now on Jimmy Fallon. Tom, what seven dwarfs do you identify with the most? No, no. Not what seven dwarfs. Which of the seven dwarfs? <laughs> Which of the seven dwarfs? I I misheard that so bad. I thought it was one. That he was just like, name seven dwarfs. (laughs) (laughs) I I thought he just named seven dwarfs. I'm going to throw up. I think I'm going to throw up. Like Brad Williams. What? <laughs> I didn't know he was like, talking about <laughs> <laughs> seven dwarfs. <coughs> oh, 
The guy from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Peter <laughs> Dinklage. Oh. 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 How do you think that question would have gone over on Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> Brad Williams. Wee man. Peter Dinklage. <laughs> You're like, I don't know, seven. <laughs> Name four. <laughs> this guy's loving dwarfs over here, huh? <laughs> I, I was like, wow, that's a weird fucking question. We're not going to do any more. Just stop. <laughs> uh. All right, Tom. On Jimmy Fallon. No. Real quick, what's the worst thing about getting older? You just know you're so much closer to death every day, you know? <laughs> I wonder why they're not booking us on Fallon. I mean, we'd be the perfect just uh, guys who don't hear the question the way they they wrote it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that, that that last one's funny. that's a good question. <laughs> that's a great question. That's a fun one. All right, that's let's let's see if we can volleyball that. What's the best thing to tell someone in the middle of a hug? so many ways to go middle of a hug i voted for trump too <laughs> mm. daddy hug like this yeah mm. reminds you of your dad's breath mm. harder <laughs> did you ever have an ant touch you like this okay let's think out of the box best thing to say in the middle of a hug we're going to take our country back. I watch cows getting slaughtered online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man with a very special set of skills. Middle of a hug. I've killed puppies. Yeah, fight back. See if you can get a break away from this. Okay, middle of a hug. Ready? Okay. You want to go to Auschwitz? <laughs> Like on vacation, like a sightseeing tour. A trip. And then, what? Oh, that's a good one. Just say the thing. Mm, yeah, you guessed right. Uncircumcised. <laughs> Why what about just open-ended, like middle of a hug, right? We're hugging. Yeah. Lean into your ear. You thirsty? <laughs> it's creepy, right? Yeah. That's a weird question. I bet they, I bet they, I, here's the thing that's kind of crazy is, is I guess if, um, I guess what they do, they have to, cause they couldn't put a celebrity on a spot like that. No, this is, these are all rehearsed. So everything's they, prepped. Really? Everything's prepped. So they go to them, they go, so we're going to ask you about the four, seven We're going to do these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you gave a, if a genie gave you three wishes, what would they be? And all then they're, and then their writers have written a, funny answers for they, the guests. They definitely have written and then they go, what do you think of it? And then. The guest is probably like, no, no, yes, no. And then goes, oh, I've got, I'm going to say this. And then would Ricky for sure would come up with funny shit to say. So Yeah, Ricky Gervais. I bet. Were, were these Ricky Gervais's questions? Yeah. yeah. What, what did he say were his fav, se, favorite seven dwarfs? No, no. It, they didn't say what are your favorite seven dwarfs. <laughs> uh, Which of you the realize, seven dwarfs? Do you realize how viral that would have gone if I was, I'd done Fallon oh, and that he said been that and I misheard him? You're like, I like Brad. I like. Peter Dinklage, Wee Man. I can't name <sighs> seven though. Now he would have just fallen out of his chair. Do you, I bet they would have cut it. I bet they would have made me take it from the top and redo it. Now they would, but ten yeah. years ago or twenty years ago, they would have been. It would have been. Do you remember watching? I remember watching Don Rickles on Letterman one time. Yeah, this is like right when the PC turn was happening. It was like right when I started being a comic, and he was like. Uh, he was like, great crowd, great crowd you got. Hey, you got a Puerto Rican in the front row. I know if we need a knife, where to get one, huh? Hey, hey, you know. And you can see Letterman, but they're like, hey. And everyone's like, what? And Don Rick was like, Puerto Ricans carry knives. They stab people. And you're like, oh. did you ever see Hey Dumb? Was it Hey Dummy? Hey, hey, big guy? What? Hey, big boy. No, what was the name of what was the name of Don Rickles' fucking special? Was it Hey Stupid? Hey, Don no Rickles? Mr. 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 Smiles or something. How about fucking Netflix almost releasing, what is it called? Not Mr. Potato Head. Hey, uh, 
What is just like that? Yeah. The, um, yeah. This. Yeah. Comedy special. Let's see what it says. If you go to Wikipedia, it's his last one that he did. It'll be in his, Mr. Uh, Warmth. Oh, that's Mr. Warmth. Do you ever see that? <clears throat> no. It is so fucking inappropriate. I saw him on the. He was doing like a. You know. It's like spring training, mm -hmm. and they sent him to, I think, Dodgers spring training, and he's like meeting, this is like in the 80s, he's meeting guys on the field, and they're all, you know, they're in like a, they come up to him kind of like, hey, what's up, because they know he's going to bust their balls, yeah. and he's like, where are you from? To this guy, he's like, uh, yeah, República Dominicana, he's like, what's your wife cleaning hotel rooms right now? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, you could not say that now, he, nobody hey, would say Mr. It. Warmth, is it Mr. Warmth, is that... Go up. Mr. Warmth is the Don Rickles Project. It's a documentary, but it shows a stand-up. And he just he's on stage destroying. He sees an Asian guy. He goes, two years in the jungle I was looking for your grandfather. Two fucking years. Look at this guy smelling his hand over here. <laughs> like, just the fucking greatest. The greatest. Like, And you could never do any of that. But, no. man, I was crying. Those, those guys, Buddy Hackett. Mm. I, I met Buddy Hackett once. And um, dude, go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Um, put in uh, Don Rickles. Wow, we're getting pretty good views on that last podcast. Yeah. Uh, spring training. Let's see if it's there. By the way, Capsule Hotel is the way to go. Oh my God. Oh please. yeah, yeah. See, insults the Dodgers. Oh, clap. Oh, where? It's like fourth video down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, please. Let me wait. See this. Put your headphones on. Oh, we can watch this. God, I love those guys. Do you think they're young? An entertainment coach. And the fellow that I've hired is going to make you guys relax. Here's our new entertainment coach, Don Rickles. Look at his jog. <laughs> it's all in a jog. Uh, Tubbs, would you get down the end? Tubbs. <laughs> Amigo, which means I definitely feel, Pedro, you should go back to your homeland and become a general. <laughs> Now, Pedro, I know you a lot of years, and I watched you play. You're a great ball player. Problem is, the wife don't buy it. Now, I met the wife, you got a lot of money, but how long are you going to make the woman clean hotel rooms? <laughs> you got to let her get out in the ballpark. You got to live and enjoy a little bit, you know what I mean, Pedro? You're a good amigo. How old are you now? 29. 29. He's in this country 38 years, he's still talking Spanish. I want you to know 29. something. Huh? I'm 29. 29, good, 29. You just won the lottery. You won two weeks in Acapulco. <laughs> but you're a good he man. Just, and have another look, great year. Finish he this. He just looks at him and goes, 29, 29. <laughs> <laughs> and they got mad at Shane Gillis. <laughs> oh, my God. This is fucking, this is hilarious. This is, th I, do you think that kids... These like young kids that are so like woke. Yeah, do you think that they'll watch this as the way we look at is like uh what was the very first movie ever made? It was uh the fucking very first movie is oh, about the yeah. clan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you think they'll look at that and go, What the fuck? Yeah, I think right now if somebody watching this would definitely say that. Why do we kid? enjoy it? Because it's inappropriate. Is it, so why is that? What what is it about our sense of humor that the more inappropriate, the more it makes us giggle? Because most people don't talk like this in public so yeah. it's, it's like taboo and um we know it's you know we know it's i don't know it there's a there's like a there's a dance to it there's like a fine line of doing it well the thing is like people never really got mad at rickles um because the the theory is that the audience can sense your intent like we know he's not malicious we know he's not we know it's an act and, but he's saying things that are like. But then, okay, let's then let's di let's take this apart. Why did people? I don't understand. I sincerely don't understand why people got upset with your Louisiana joke. Hmm. Like when you go, I think we should build a wall around those people. Yeah. Like, I, like, do you think it's people that don't get subtlety or don't get nuance? Part of it is that. Yeah, part of it's that. Then that then almost in a weird way we should flag those people and isolate them. I mean, I think we kind of do with without making it like a known thing. I mean, like if you want to use that as an example, you know, the backlash essentially exists online and then those people make themselves known and then other people see those people and go like, 
you know, let's isolate those people. You know what I mean? So it kind of actually so does happen. So bizarre that someone would not see the humor, in, like that 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 you'd stand on stage with a microphone and then would go, "This is a serious." Yeah, of course. And but the thing is, I mean, what I learned, or I think you, everybody, you've dealt up, with more of it than me. Well, I, but I think everybody ends up figuring it out if you're a comedian. Is you go at first when when you have like people get really upset about something, you're like, "What's going on?" But then you realize that the people that get really upset are never going to be a factor in your life because they're like, if they're really upset, if they go, I saw your fucking, Hey, big boy. And that joke about, you know, the broom and the mop, fuck, you know, you're a horrible person. You're like, okay, they're not going to buy a ticket to the next show. So they're not a factor anymore. Yeah, You're never you know? going to like what I did. That's what yeah. Ari's point was. Uh, this joke wasn't meant for you. Right. It was meant for my fans. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand what he's saying by that. I understand what he's saying. I yeah. mean, you know, the, it makes sense to say that. It okay. makes sense that you go. So this not was... to not to go like inside baseball and talk about. But it's, it's a totally different show when you wear headsets. It is. Do you Did like you... it or no? Uh, I don't care. I've always liked headsets. I like headsets too. Yeah. Um, here's my question: Is that and I could deconstruct comedy and and specials more importantly all day long. I will. Here's how I do it: Is <clears throat> I say something offensive. I do not know it's offensive often. Until I'm in the in the editing bay with a uh, black assistant editor, and I'm watching the Starbucks joke, and I'm like, "Ooh, I wonder how this is gonna play." Like, I don't think things through. Did right? That editor like it? He loved it. Oh. He loved it. He was like, "Dude." And then I told him how it, a whole I like broke down the joke and how it started, and he mm -hmm. was like, "He was like, are you fucking serious?" And then it's it's better. I wish I could have kept it the way I originally did it, but it couldn't because people. Did you see the guy in the the last Star Wars that looks like you? No. There's a Oh, is he the guy that was in Heroes? I don't know. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. He's a fighter pilot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were watching it the other night. I was like, fuck, that guy looks like Burke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on type in uh Heroes, uh Fighter Pilot, Star Wars. So so here's my question is that you kind of lean into it. And I know you said in this special you lean into it. You're like, man, if they thought they thought the last one was offensive, wait till they see this. Well, yeah, there's a huge the the Every special pretty much has like your, you know, signature section or yeah. piece to it. So there's a section in like the. That's not nah, him. Nah, it's definitely not him. Definitely not him. Um, <clears throat> Type in cast of heroes. Heroes is a TV show on NBC. And then type NBC, not Hogan's heroes. And then he's that guy. He's that guy right there. But he's gotten fatter. That's why he looks like me. <laughs> That's who it is. That's who it is? Yeah. I can't see him. Find out his name. Yeah, that that now now he looks like me. Oh, now I see it. The more. guy yeah, the guy next to Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson? Is that not Mike Tyson? I can't see. Who is it? I know that guy. Who is that? Mm. Oh, no, that Is it the cast of heroes? Anyway, so wait, here's my question. Who are we talking about? People that look like me. No, no but I'm ta we're talking about you. When you go to write a joke, do you is there is there subjects that you steer away from where you go? It's too hard. It's nah, it's not. No, I but can't work I, it. I do think that like things are of interest to you, like naturally. Yeah, and like I won't I won't go. Okay, what's a big hot topic right now? Like a a polarizing thing. Oh, mass shootings. I'm gonna write a, like I don't work. I, I go joke about that. My new my new hour. I, but I, I I think I think in terms of if I if if we pick up a topic, mass shootings are a thing that exists, and I and I have a a thought, an opinion yeah. that I feel like something is coming out of. Well, then I do it because my natural instinct is to talk about it. Yeah. But I'm not gonna go like I have to have. A so you think do you, you think com comedy really is just a representation? of your personality and what you find humorous mm -hmm. for all of us. I think so. So then what comic, what, like what comic do you look at and you go, ah, that blows me the way, the way his, like what he, like remember Jay London? Yes. Like the way, what he found funny, what his sense of humor yeah. was, was like slumber party. humor. I find it. I find it interesting when you can watch somebody like that and you go like, Oh, that dude's brain is interesting. Yeah, like a, you know Brent Weinbach's like that to me, yeah. where I go like, you might see him at first, and you're like, your head turns, you're like, what's going on, and then you start 
to really enjoy the ride of like this dude's brain works differently. Yeah, Dimitri Martin has a different type of brain. Yeah. Like you, you watch him and you're like, because I'll always, especially with guys that write jokes like that, when you when I watch your comedy, I kind of shut my brain off and enjoy it. Like mm -hmm. I, it's, it's a different with, and, and that's as a comedian, but as a comedian, when I watch Dimitri, I try to figure the middle, the riddle out. You do? Oh yeah. You I try I, to guess I, it? I try to guess it. It's like a magic trick. Wow. I, I feel like I, I mean, some those straight up joke writer guys, like where they just go like, this is a hundred written setup and punches. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I do the thing where I go, I'm just going to try to enjoy this. Jesselnik has the best first joke in a comedy special ever. Really? Without it. Did you watch his special? Yeah. Which one was it? Was it was the very first joke. Uh, I have a friend whose wife's pretty Christian, and she always blames me for his bad behavior. And the other day, she came in. By the way, I'm m murdering your joke, Anthony. I apologize. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just, I want you to watch this special. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. I remember it now. It's Just go type in Anthony Jesselnik's Netflix special. Even, oh, he's I mean, got a few. You, oh, yeah. It's the late. By the way, I loved his fucking, the one before that where he talked about the shark attack thing. Thoughts and, thoughts and prayers. It, no, one. it's one where he trashes Comedy Central for fucking 30 minutes. I'm trying to remember the names. It though. was such a departure from what he does with the joke writing. He tells this like story about about getting slammed by Comedy Central, and yeah, I loved it, dude. Yeah. He's a great comedian. He, he really, really is. is, yeah. I take that back. Dave Chappelle's probably got the best. Dave Chappelle's kicker in the pussy joke. Oh, that one was great. Was I actually really loved my favorite, favorite, favorite. My I the one that I love was the most recent one when he opened with uh talking about uh Anthony Bourdain. Oh yeah. Dude. Here's what because I the truth is like the most important element in comedy really is surprise. Like when you don't expect something. A hundred and he percent. He does that thing in that where he's like He's like, you know, dude had the best job. And then he just starts telling a story about a guy that was in like medical school or something or law school. And then and he gave his life up, gave his life up for a chick. And then he ended up being, he saw him at a foot locker 20. And like, it's this huge long thing that he's like, and not once did that motherfucker think about killing himself. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking fell out. I mean, I really did. I laughed so hard. Here's at what's brilliant about what Chappelle does is he's got a way of, not losing me even when he's not when he's not telling a joke or he's kind of stringing one joke to another man he can take like five minutes and he will not lose me i don't know what it is because he subscribes to that theory and i think it's a hundred percent true that uh when you're not being funny as long as you're interesting you're you're captivating to an audience so you don't have to be getting a laugh at all moments as long as you're interesting you're saying something either interesting or you're you know, he's such a master speaker that you'll follow him along on those moments where it's not comedy. Yeah. And so like he's mastered that, like being this, it's like being a preacher almost, you know, like where he just is up there talking and you're, you're just kind of dialed into what he's saying. And then he goes back to jokes. You don't even remember that the last few minutes haven't been about something funny. Do you realize how long and off tangent I could get if I had Chappelle style? Like I'd just be like <clears throat> waxing poetically about fucking Nothing. I don't read books. I don't watch documentaries. Yeah. <clears throat> you should start smoking cigarettes. I think that, that that was a great idea. And, you know, you see about where he's gone with them. Why wouldn't you even try to smoke cigarettes? <laughs> Donnell said, I said, Donnell, are you smoking? He goes, no, I've been around Chappelle. I said, what? And he goes, Dave Chappelle smokes so many cigarettes. You want to quit smoking when you're around him. Yeah. I, I would love to smoke It's definitely cigarettes. dialed up. Do you think up. he has anxiety about, like, getting... Like smoking and all the fucking bad health things. I think he's all in on uh, being a legend. Yeah, and and I think he's just gonna deal with he's those that smoking is gonna cost him at some point. But I think he's just like okay with it. I mean, I I, I fucking hold such a tight line. He smokes so much, man. He does. On that one special, he was vaping throughout it. Yeah, because he they really wouldn't let him smoke there. That's For real? He, yeah, yeah. That's why he had to vape. Where did he do that at? forget he's been smoking i feel like in all of them now yeah <laughs> yeah well you see him vaping it's because <laughs> they were like if you fucking light up a cigarette in this place <laughs> we're going to shut the lights off you know that's crazy but he also smokes i mean he smokes in the hallways of the comedy store he smokes on stage and they're like you're not allowed to smoke here and then he knows now that that, that it's a flex like a power move he did it i think on snl 
where he, they were like, are you allowed to smoke? He's like, no, but who's going to tell me not to? <laughs> How fucking great yeah. is yeah. that? It's like Stanhope brings his own bottle. He brings travels with his own booze because uh-huh. he can't trust anybody. Yeah. So he always just pulls a bottle of booze out of his jacket mm-hmm. and pours a drink. And they're like, hey, you, you can't drink here. And he's like, okay. Yeah. Just makes a cocktail. You should start doing that. I just quit drinking. Sunday? Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. How long are you going to go without drinking now? Uh, eight weeks. You're not going to drink for eight weeks? I'm going to see. What do you mean you're gonna see? I'm gonna see. I'm gonna. I told. I. I well, I'm not. So the way this. Oh my working, God! How is your uh, vegetarian challenge going? It's going fucking awesome. So it's been one day. It's been one day. And I made a brisket last night. <laughs> I forgot we were doing it. <laughs> I had swordfish and brisket for dinner. <laughs> I made a 15 pound brisket last night. I'm Fuck. trying to figure out who broke, who lost first. <laughs> Uh, I had broccoli, by the way, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't, it would have been you because I didn't have, I had broccoli and a, um, egg, uh, patty things and eggs for breakfast. And then I didn't eat until nine o'clock at night. I had uh swordfish and brisket. Okay. So I think you got to buy the dandy suits. Then. Okay. Well, let's wait until this, uh, economic downturn. Let's see if we all cheap we can get dandy suits for. <laughs> yeah. We could probably <laughs> get quite a deal on them. Not everyone's going out buying dandy suits. Can you imagine in the middle like, of a non-essential like business like that? Oh, they've got to be like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> I can't figure this one out. Um, are you trying to support local businesses? Uh, I am. I'm worried about my sweatshop. My or not sweatshop. It's called sweat sweatshop. That's why they changed the name of it. It's sweat cycle. Oh, yeah. I'm worried about sweat cycle. Actually, I'm going to, I should call Hannah Drake right now. Oh, I don't have her fucking number. number. I was going to tell her, because all these, all these instructors that I work there are now kind of out of work, and, yeah. it's, and it's impossible to get a job, and I was going to try to tell them that what they should do is lean in to a podcast or lean in to social media, mm-hmm. and like, I, I mean, I would definitely listen to Hannah Drake. Uh, Hannah is the first, on the very first episode, she's the wa- the waitress that came in with the drinks she's also my instructor for spin cycle for spin cycle is where i go sweat cycle sweat cycle but she has great playlists she has great taste in music so she put together a playlist and puts it on her instagram but what she should do is put them on a spotify list so that people like me that are getting on a treadmill can li- it's fun to listen to music when you don't know what comes up next yeah and put together and do you want to go get donuts so bad why i don't know i'm just thinking of something to do yeah but my, Liam would be so mad at me if I let, I'm not allowed to leave the house except to see you. Oh. Yeah, she has put me on strict lockdown. Strict lockdown. Yeah, because she's because we asked it of the girls. Because the girls wanted to go party. And, party? Yeah, like all their friends are off. They're like, I'm going to, Georgia was like, I'm going to go to Ava's house for the weekend. And Leanne's like, It no, would, by the way, if, if we were in high school, how great would this have been? If you're like, oh, school's just over now? It's the shit. I would have been, and I hate to say this because I know that there are kids doing this. Yeah. I would have been the kid going, what? I can't get it. Fuck it. Yeah, of course. Fuck it. I'm partying balls. I'm going out in the boat. I'm going yeah. fucking wakeboarding. I'm drinking. I'm fuck. Who cares? Who cares? They had their, tif- I would have been yeah, that kid. Of course. You'd be like, <clears> I don't <throat> care if I get you pregnant. We're all going to die. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm. I, maybe I take that back because AIDS came out when I was a kid and I was terrified, fucking terrified. Of getting AIDS? Yeah, back when we thought uh, straight white dudes could get AIDS. Yeah. that's I was terrified. I kind of believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I got drunk with a bunch of people from the CDC in Atlanta that came to my show <laughs> at the Laughing Skull. This is a long time ago. Uh-huh. And I said something about what diseases do we need to worry about? Like, thought we were just bullshitting. And I said, like, and they, I said something about AIDS, and they all laughed at me. One of the guys at the CDC, drunk, said, do you know what we call a straight guy with AIDS? I said, what? And he goes, a liar. I went, holy shit. <laughs> I was like, I, all I heard out of that was, I've been wearing condoms for nothing. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but, it's true. You don't need to wear them. Dude, when I was, I mean, if it, like, I'm not, not to like, this is where I spin off in my conspiracy theory, yeah. but like, it would have decimated our friend population. Like all, how many how many kids did you go to high school that have AIDS that are straight? How many? Oh, you want me to run through them right now? Yeah, N- none, <laughs> zero. <laughs> like that question's ridiculous. Yeah, zero. Like how many and, of your <laughs> friends from high school that are straight have AIDS? None. And but they told you as a kid you're gonna get AIDS. 
Yeah. And it's not like, it's not like. Did they ever wheel a, an AIDS patient into your school? No. We did. We had one. Oh, I'm going to top this, but uh, I'm dying to hear this story. Well, they were like, you need to go to the uh, auditorium. And uh, we went to the auditorium and there's just like a lady sitting on stage, kind of like downtrodden. We're like, what is this? They don't even tell us what's happening. And then they're like, okay, we got, uh, this is a special speaker and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we're still all like, you know, listening, kind of zoning out. And they're like, and, you know, she's got something really important to to tell you guys. And we're like, mm, okay. And then she's like, my name, I forget her name. And she goes, blah, 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 and I have AIDS. And everybody was like, <laughs> what? Because we'd never, you know, heard anything like that. And then she went on to tell us that she got it, I think from a blood transfusion and that her T cell count was down to like 30 or something. Oh, she blood was, transfusion she was, was like, shit. She's like, I'm gonna die <laughs> soon. Oh. And gave us this whole, and of course it was so somber, it was so depressing. And then, yeah, not long later they made it, they announced, they let us know, they're like, she died. And everybody's like, okay, cool. And they're like, so, don't get AIDS. <laughs> don't get AIDS. They brought us in 10th grade. Mm-hmm. And they brought in a TV into religion class, and we're like, sweet. And that was the like, best when they wheel in the TV. Oh, wheel in the TV. Uh, Mr. Mercandante puts in the tape, hits play, and he's like, gentlemen, this is a third trimester abortion, and walks out of the room. And we were like, and we watched a full uh, third trimester abortion where oh they broke God. apart the baby, oh pulled, out, pulled out the body parts. What the fuck? What's man? crazy is that, you know, gallows humor, we're a bunch of boys, all boys Catholic high school. They show a pussy and we go fucking bananas. Yeah. Like we see a chick's pussy and we're like, oh shit. Oh shit. And then they go in it. We're like, oh God, this is going to get. And then an arm comes out. We're uh. like, what the fuck? They broke apart that baby piece by piece and uh. they showed us that whole fucking thing. All right. God damn, man. Yeah. And then they put it back in and put it back together. <laughs> Fuck. I had to form my personality somehow. I'm sure that did something to you. They'd bring up, they'd bring in dudes into our chapel, and they'd give a speech. Uh, my name's Dave. I'm I'm 22 years old, and I was driving down the causeway drunk, going the wrong way, and I killed a whole family. Oh, and I'm God. here to talk to you about drinking and driving. And all yeah. of us are like, "Yeah, we're not fucking assholes, Dave. Yeah, we have a couple drinks and drive. Fucking Jesus." <laughs> I remember that they um they brought in a coach. Um, a college basketball coach and he gave a speech and it was a good speech you know it, yeah. I, f I forget like but it was it was some type of like motivation and he was a good speaker and then I found out that they paid him like 10 or 20 thousand dollars for that and I was like what whoa and this was not a here's the thing it wasn't a big time like top tier coach but that is part of if you're in that you know, job lane that is there's the speaking market and you go and you, you know, you get hired to do these things. Oh. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And then years later when I started doing stand up, uh, my, the school reached out to me and I remembered that. And I was like, yeah, but you got to pay up. And they were like, well, you're an alum. So can you give us a discount? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then they go, Oh, well then, I guess we won't do it. And oh, I like, speak great. of my I speak of my high school in a second. Oh yeah, I'd go. This but maybe I, you like them. No, no. This is what I do. I said I would speak there, and then I'd be I'd go faculty priests get outside, lock the doors, and I would give these boys a lesson in fucking life. What would you tell them? I tell them number one, fuck school. Find out what you want to do and do it and love it, yeah. dude. I wish someone had told me about comedy so much more. I like this is what's the hardest part about taking this time off is that. I don't feel like um, I, I I feel put upon because I love what I do. I will I would work. You know I work every single weekend I can. Yeah, I love doing comedy. It's the best. And the fact that it's taken away from me makes me like I was so deflated when we were in New Orleans and they were they came in the bus and they were like, "Hey, we pulled the shows." I was so fucking deflated and I felt so depressed for like the next three days. I couldn't get out of it. I was like. I was like, so what am I supposed to do? Yeah, that's like, a whole new reality for us. But man. every kid in that room should find that thing they love to do. I agree. If it's video games, collecting baseball cards, whatever it is, if you love it, you're going to fucking succeed at it. If you love it. You got to pursue it. You got to pursue it. I mean, I, I talk about it in that new special. Really? I do. Yeah, I'm serious. Really? Because I talk about it because 
I talk about the fact that we meet a lot of people and it started to bum me out to meet people that go, oh yeah, man, my fucking, this is the highlight of my life because my life sucks. And I'll be like, what the fuck, man? And yeah. then they go like, you know, yeah, my, I, I hate what I do. And you're like, well, why are you doing that? So it just became like a theme to build off of. But yeah, I believe in that, 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 I mean, it's, it's something that everybody kind of knows, Yeah. but for some reason they don't buy into, but it is true that if you really pursue, um, work in a passion space like something you're passionate about it becomes like the best thing ever you yeah know? even if I mean, all of us became like that they don't realize that like we were obsessed with doing stand-up obsessed and broke yes we were well, obsessed and that's broke. the thing you stay in it forever because your obsession necessitates that you do it you know like yeah. you, you have to do i didn't have a choice i don't have a choice i don't get to but i don't want to give a discount to my fucking school Okay. <laughs> That's not about loving or not loving stand up performance. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. I paid full tuition. Why the hell do I have to give you a discount? <laughs> we had we had uh we had our baseball team. We played we used to play alumni mm -hmm. and uh and they were like just local guys that used to play for the baseball team and then our team at the time would play them. So one guy was a, a, a baker, I think, or like an electrician. So it was like a, every one of them was like, he's a cop, he's a firefighter, yeah. he's a baker, he's an electrician. And this is before becoming a baker was an artisanal thing. It was like you just were a baker. And I remember being on stealing second base, and I was talking to the guy, and I, I wanted him to say he was a baker. And I said, uh, I said so he was like covering the bag. And I go, so what do you do for a living? And he goes, I'm a baker. I said, do you like what you do? And he looked at me and he goes, fuck no. And I went, oh. Yeah, it's horrible. And I was, I remember looking I at I mean, it's the, horrible to feel that way. Yeah, and I remember looking at all the guys that we were playing against, and I was like, oh, they all, at that, those guys all hated their jobs. That used to be the mandate. And now you look at it and you're like, oh, kids, I would tell that to everyone. Find the thing you love to do. I also feel like there's such a great, I mean, this is a personality type thing. Yeah. But working for yourself, like, if I didn't have comedy and you go like, what would you be doing? Oh. I would go, well, I would find some business that it's the business is I can do it. You know what I mean? Like that's what I love about this era is, uh, you know, we were talking about sneakers earlier and like you can, you could buy a bunch of sneakers and do a online thing and, and you know, have them auctioned and sell them direct. Like that type of thinking and, and the work is, is what I would pursue if I wasn't doing comedy. I would try to, make a living not going to an office oh i wouldn't make i wouldn't go to office it's funny i, I met a kid who said he wanted to be a youtube star a youtube a youtube star a youtube star and then you <laughs> and then you you see that and you're like you're like wow that's silly and then you i put up youtube videos that i edit and it's yeah. so much fun yeah and then i go well fucking why wouldn't you just absolutely get better at it absolutely that fucking logan paul kid man I don't know. He's got to be dialed in. I watched a couple of his videos because Joe was talking about him. Yeah. And they really move fast. And he's I was like, this, he knows this, what he's doing. He knows what the fuck he's doing. And he's got me like, I'm watching it. I watched him get knocked out and then wrestle a dude. And I was like, he's living his dream. He's living his best life. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'd be a professional um, athlete. What was I going to mention to you? I fucking forgot. I just remember, I fucking forgot. I was going to ask you something. Typo positive, typo. Typo positive. I don't think whatever I am. Oh, I, this is the last thing I wanted to say. Um, last thing. Are well, we done? No, no, we're not done. But I was just, I, I remember this from earlier that I wanted to say. Is that right now, like ever, there's different levels to this and, the, and it affects things differently. Like during this quarantine, I don't know if the stuff's going to be where we are now in a few days when this comes out. Yeah. But like there's things you can do, um, you know, like, I try to support some local businesses. Oh, that's what we were on. talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah my bad. First thing I mentioned to you. And like you can, you know, like, like for instance, there's pick up, dine out food right now. You can order, especially from a small place and ordering that food. And if you can't afford to, to tip them, like you're, you're keeping somebody else, like you're helping them out. Yeah. But I also feel like, you know, like one thing, like I have a regular guy that picks me up for all my airport runs, you know? Yeah. And I called him today just to check on him. And I think that that's something that everybody can do is like check on people right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? People that you normally 
see wherever, I don't know, like in your day to day strolling around or, you know, a local business, like even if you can't financially support them, you can check on them, you know, you can call them. I think it helps. Yeah. I think what else, I, I think another thing I was thinking today is like, there's a lot of our friends in the business who, you know, like us a couple of years ago, were just doing clubs, just yeah. doing clubs. And they're and they have podcasts and what I think what a lot of us should do is volunteer like go hey man let me get on your podcast let's blow your numbers up oh, and try right. to boost your podcast so we can get you advertising that's Cause, a good idea because I think there's a lot of like there's a lot I mean there's a lot in within our own community that we're I think we're going to be obligated to do look at all those servers all those fucking doormen all those people that just their salaries go they're going to be hurting I, of yeah. course. I mean, we should definitely, I don't know. I think one of the things you I said. I told you, you know what we should do? We should do a fucking live podcast out of the store. No no audience in there. Do a live podcast and bring all our friends on one by one and do a fundraiser, put up a GoFundMe and be like, if you were in the middle of the country, you're in West Virginia and you're not affected at all, but you love podcasts, you love comedy, just all you do, throw five bucks at the GoFundMe and then and then build a GoFundMe and then take that and disperse it across all these clubs in LA of all the servers. Well, I that... can already tell you how like people will try to attack that idea. Why? I, no, because I, I know what's going to happen. People will go like, well, you're talking about the servers, but like I'm struggling too. And it's like, yeah. I understand that. Like a yeah. lot of people are struggling significantly um, yeah. during this time because it's basically like an economy shutting down. Yeah. I think what, but what Bert's saying is that if you're in a position where you can, um, look, it doesn't have to be, comedy related it can be like a server a bartender somebody with a completely different job who is now um in a shitty place you know you can reach out and you can bartenders man they've shutting bars down everywhere that's what i'm saying it's a, it's it's everywhere so um if you're in a position to financially you know help somebody you can do that but also like if you're not it doesn't mean you can't just um you know reach out to people and be cognizant of how you represent yourself on social media and the life you're living, if you're a young person, because there are people that are on your social media that are your friends that are fucking struggling, mm -hmm. that have lost everything and don't have a way to pay rent this month. And if you're at a beach party and balls, because I mean, that's what I, I just I like. You're saying what? Don't depict that. Don't like be just be cognizant that you may be rubbing in it into someone else. Yeah, that's that's actually not bad advice. I, man. I, well, it was given to me by Leanne when I said we should go skiing. <laughs> She was like, she was like, I'm not going fucking skiing with you. Like I go, yeah. well, no, let's go to like Canada. We'll go to Banff. We'll fucking get the fuck out. We'll drive up yeah. and take the tour bus. So I'm still got a tour bus for fucking two months. Oh, right. You already paid for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and I almost feel badly. I bought a Ferrari the other day and I was posting this photo. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I go, how can I, what if I just sent Ron on the road in my tour bus to go help people? I go, Hey Ron, I got a job for you. I'm paying everyone. Yeah. Everyone get out. Go out. Yeah. But yeah, I don't look, by the way, I don't know anything I'm talking about. So don't listen to me about any of this fucking talk. That kind of advice uh, is very true. Never listen to Bert on anything. Yep. Um, and, and in having said that, definitely watch Tom Segura's <laughs> special ball hog ball hog. Uh, it should be streaming now or very soon. If you're watching this, the moment it comes out. Thanks everybody. Um, I had a really, an ama I, I will say this sincerely. I had a great time on that tour. It was the highlight of my career thus far. Um, and shooting that was a, an amazing experience so thank you everybody i hope you enjoy it I hope what's you the one people. joke what's the one joke that would make you make your like heart swell if people were like dude i love that dot 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 joke um man can i tell you my, i'll tell you my two while i let you think yeah yeah okay? go ahead and tell me if this doesn't uh fucking ring very true to this podcast okay the one about the black guy and hitler <laughs> from my special yeah it was a, it was when you got to say that it was like it was <laughs> those, those are the two you're like i love your hitler joke i'm like ah, thank you that's i guess you definitely watched the special and then this black starbucks yeah for me i would say the gypsy the <laughs> woman at the bar um i can't wait Wu tang and my dad Wu Tang and my dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those, uh -oh. are the, those are the ones that probably tickled me. The Should most. I live stream watching your special? I would love that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll put it on. Hey, let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Next week, mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I say we do when your special comes out. Yeah. I say for promotion, we can we do it here. We live stream mm -hmm. where we set up for all our fans. We're gonna watch it together. Yeah. And. 
I watch your special. Yep. And then you watch my. You've already seen my special, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, what, uh, that would oh, be we a could comment on it, like like a fight companion. Yeah, like a fight companion. That's funny. It's a funny idea. Yeah, we and should do stuff like that. We should do a actually. A fight. We, we could do it for that, which is a great idea, and we could do it for TV shows, movies. We could do it with anything. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, I would love. Um, what we should do is we should watch it, and so that you're not watching the whole special. We should watch it, and then I'll pull out my five favorite clips. Uh-huh. And then we'll watch that clip. I'll tell you why I loved it, and then you tell me how you wrote it. Okay. And okay. then and then you, it doesn't even need to be five. I bet it could be like three and three. Yeah. And we'll each do that. Maybe we'll do that on the next two bears one cave. We can probably set that up. What do you think, Nadav? Yeah, I think we could set something like that. Up. Yeah, okay. we'll each pick our two two or three favorite bits uh, from each other's specials. Okay. We'll watch it live. We'll giggle. Maybe we'll get high, and then we'll and then we'll. Pick, then you can tell me how it started, how you wrote it, and, and everything about like your I love process. It. It's a great idea. That's a great idea. Okay. What's coming next on Two Bears One Cave next week? We're we're here next week, right? We should be. Yep. Let's do it. Uh, we got nothing else to do. Go to Netflix. Hey, big boy, and then Ball Hog. They're uh, they're both streaming. Um, love you. I love you too. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur fartology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears One Cave.